We're going to add and subtract. Yesterday we multiplied and divided algebraic fractions. Today we're going to add and subtract. There's basically two things that we want to take care of. First of all, before you can add or subtract fractions, as we're going to see in a numeric example in a minute, you've got to have a common denominator. So the first thing that we want to be able to do is, given a couple of uh, or two or more algebraic fractions, we want to be able to find the LCD. You do that by factoring. Get everything factored up, and you can tell what your LCD is going to be. And then once we've got LCDs, then we can go ahead and add and subtract. Really only one thing to work on, that's adding and subtracting today. We're just going to do several examples of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by looking at a numeric example to try and uh, get you thinking about what, what we do with basic numeric fractions. For example, suppose we have 9 over 16, and to that we want to add 5 over 12. Well, a couple of things. Remember, first of all, we've got to have a common denominator. Now, there's two ways to approach this. 12 and 16. What is the common denominator of 12 and 16? It's 48. 48 will work. Yep. 4 times 12 will give you 48, and 3 times 16 gives you 48. But that may not jump out at you. Well, algebraic fraction common denominators are not going to jump out at you either. So you need to have some sort of a methodical system for finding the common denominator when it doesn't jump out at, uh, jump out at you. Well, here's what we really do. We're just going to take these two and we're going to break them into their factors and look at the factors. Okay, so 16 would factor into 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or in other words, we'll just call it 2 to the fourth power. 12 factors into 3 times 2 times 2, or 3 times 2 squared. Now, our LCD has to be such that It's large enough. It's kind of like a grocery bag that's got to be big enough to hold any one of these parts independently. So it has to be at least big enough to hold a 2 to the fourth power. Now, if we put a 2 to the second power in there, it'll fit in there, and there will be room left over. But it has to be at least big enough to hold a 2 to the fourth power. So it's got to be large enough to hold a 2 to the fourth. But what else do we got to fit into this bag we call our LCD? You got to fit a 3 in there. Okay. So we look at our individual factors, and based on the factors, we decide what the LCD has to be large enough to contain. So this factor will fit into that bag. There's a couple of room for a couple more twos. This will fit into the bag, and there's room for an extra three. So that is your LCD, and that LCD is equal to 2 to the fourth times 3. That's 16 times 3. Sure enough, that's 48. Now, the other thing that that does, by establishing our LCD, the other thing that that does is it tells us what we need to multiply each fraction by so that they can be written with a common denominator. For example, 9 over 2 to the fourth, what do we have to multiply this denominator by to get the LCD? We have to multiply them both by 3. So this becomes 9 times 3 over 2 to the fourth times 3, plus this one becomes 3 times 2 squared. Well, what do we need to multiply this by in order to get our LCD? Two, yeah, two more 2's, 2 squared. So this is going to become 5 times 2 squared. And down here, we're going to have 2 to the fourth times 3. So what we really have, after all that, is we have 27 over 48 plus 5 times 2 squared, 20 over 48. Now we have a common denominator. We can add them together. Now going back to the original problem, when you saw the original problem, you would multiply 9 sixteenths, both top and bottom, by 3. Well, that's really what we did here to get the LCD. And then the 5 twelfths, you would multiply both those by 4, which is why we had to multiply it by 2 squared. Well, we add those together, and we get add our numerators. 27 plus 20 is 47 over 48, and we're done. 
we factor to establish what the LCD is, and then we supplement each denominator so that we have the LCD, a common denominator, and then we can add. That's what we're going to do with algebraic fractions. Okay. Now, all we want to do here is figure out the LCD. We're not going to add these yet. All we're going to do is look at this expression and determine what the LCD is. Okay, well, let's look at our LCD. Basically, everything is already factored, right? Whenever you've got one term, there's really not much factoring to do. So we have to look at the numeric part, 6, 10, and 5. What is the lowest common denominator for the 6, the 10, and the 5? 30. So our LCD has got to be 30. Again, it's got to be size such that the 6, the 10, and the 5 will all go into it by multiplying it by some integer. And they all do. Okay, now look at our power of a's. Here we've got a squared, here we've got an a, there we've got an a to the third. So the LCD has to be a to the third. And the b's, b squared, b to the fourth b, so we have b to the fourth. So our LCD is 30 a to the third b to the fourth. That's all we're asked at this point. Well, the natural question to ask then is, what do you get when you add them up? Or combine them, I should say. We are subtracting off the last one. So let's combine them. So we need to change each one of those now so that they have a common denominator. So let's do it like this. We're going to multiply each one of these fractions by some value so that we have a common denominator. Let's rewrite this first one. What are we going to multiply this first one by so that we have our LCD? 5. A to the third, we need one more A. So 5A, B squared. Better do the same thing in the top. 5A, B squared. Yep. Plus. The second term we had was 5b to the fifth. Ten A B to the fourth. So now we need to multiply both of these. Yep, three. Uh, we want a to the third. We've got one a, so we're gonna have to supplement that with a squared. A squared. And our b, we've got b to the fourth. We've got b to the fourth. OK, so that one's done. Minus the last one we had there was 3 over 5a to the third b. So we better multiply both of these by 6. We've already got our a to the third. We've got one b. We need b to the fourth, so this is better b. b to the third. OK, now we've got common denominators, and we can add them up. Stop there for a minute. Look OK so far? All right. Now we can rewrite this. So I'm going to get rid of the LCD here, just to save a little space. This becomes. Well, let's do the easy part first. The denominator of this fraction becomes 30, a to the third, b to the fourth. That's our LCD. What does the numerator become? 5a squared, b to the fourth. Yep. Everybody agree with that? OK, plus. Next one's going to have a denominator of, what do you know, 30a to the third, b to the fourth. And our numerator here, 15a squared, b to the fifth. Yep. All right, and the last one. Now, ultimately, it's worth noting, have we changed the value of any of these three fractions? No, you multiply top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing. It doesn't change the value. It just changes the denominator. Minus 3, whoops, not 3, 18, 18b to the third over 
a cubed b to the fourth. Okay, now we've got our three terms with a common denominator. We're good to go. We can go ahead and combine them now. So we can put it all over one fraction. This becomes five a squared b to the fourth. plus 15a squared b to the fifth. Minus 18b to the third. All over 38a to the third b to the fourth. The only thing we have left to do is check to see if we have any canceling that we can do, and we're going to. We're going to have just a little bit of canceling. Now, the bottom is already factored, but you should, you should check for common factors here. Do we have any common factors in 5a to the fourth, b to the, sorry, 5a squared b to the fourth, 15a squared b to the fifth, and 18b to the third? Common factors? The only common factor there is b to the third. We can pull a b to the third out of the whole works. And so we're left with b to the third times. 5a squared b plus 15a squared b squared minus 18 all over 38 to the third b to the fourth. Now we're still not done. We're 99% of the way done, but now that we've got that common factor of b cubed out front, you can cancel. We couldn't cancel term by term, but since b cubed is a common factor to each of these, we can cancel it out. And so we can cancel off our b to the third, and this b to the fourth becomes b. And so we're left with, that's gone. that our parentheses no longer serve any purpose. And we're done. That's what we get when we combine those fractions. Go back to that original problem. Before you even ask yourself, what's the LCD? What could have you done right in the beginning? There you could have canceled off your b squareds out of that first term. You could have even canceled a b to the third out of that second term. And there's nothing you could cancel out of the third term. And you could cancel an a out of that first term. So you can cancel before you do anything. But once you decide on your LCD, then you're locked in. Then you have to follow through. Because if we start canceling, if we were to cancel, for example, here or here, our denominators wouldn't all be the same anymore because that same canceling might not occur in each one of the three. See, if we were to cancel these two off, now we'd only have b squared down here instead of b to the fourth, and we lost our common denominator. So we will, uh, when possible, we will cancel off those common factors to begin with. In this case, I left them in there so that when we're done, we watch for that common canceling. But in general, it's better to cancel them in the beginning. So let's go back to this one. We want to, we want to add x squared minus 5x over 25 minus x squared plus x over 2x squared plus 10x. All right. Well, the first step, no matter what you're doing, is to, to what? Um, well, yeah, but even before that, you need to factor, basically. You're looking for that kind of factoring, but we want to factor. So yeah, I guess that's the same thing. We're looking for a greatest common factor or any kind of factoring. So let's factor this thing up. The first numerator becomes x times x minus 5. The first term denominator becomes, Careful with this one. It would be uh, easy to make a mistake in this first one. What does that factor into? 
good. 5 minus x, 5 plus x. It would be an easy, incorrect thing to say, x plus 5, x minus 5. The order matters there. Your first terms have to be the 5s. The last terms have to be the x's. Now, we're going to have a little canceling there, kind of, in just a minute. But let's just keep going here. I'll factor this top one for you. That one turns out to be x. What does the bottom one factor into? 2x times x plus 5. Okay. Now, canceling. What have you got canceling? Is x minus 5 the same as 5 minus x? Not. No. No. Not. No. They're similar, but they're not the same. For example, is 3 minus 5 equal to 5 minus 3? No, they're not. This one's negative 2. This one's positive 2. But we can make them the same. If you've got similar binomial except the signs are reversed, we've got positive x, negative x, positive 5, negative 5. The signs are reversed. How do you get the signs switched around? Factor out a negative 1. Let's take a negative 1 and pull it out in front here, and that'll switch these signs over. Now we have negative x plus 5. That matches that. Even though the order of the terms is switched, they have the same signs. Negative x, negative x, 5, 5. That's a common trick to have to do when you're uh, getting common denominators or trying to cancel. It's a very common trick. Your signs will be almost match, but they'll be opposite. You factor out a negative 1, and then they match. Well, then those two are history. They're gone. It's important to note, though, we're going to solve equations tomorrow, and we're going to have to go back to the restrictions. And even though this cancels off, we still have to recognize the restriction that's here, even though it cancels. What would be our restriction on x due to this, even though it cancels? 5. Okay, 5 minus x can't be 0, so 5 would be a restriction. We're going to work with that more tomorrow. I just want to point it out now. Okay, so our problem becomes. negative x over 5 plus x plus x over, well, wait a minute. We got a little more canceling we can do here, don't we? Let's cancel off that uh, x here. We can cancel these x's off. And so our second term here becomes 1 over. two times x plus 5. Now we've almost got our common denominator there. We should know what is the LCD. 2 times x plus 5, that's right. So what do we need to multiply? Well, here we've already got our common denominator in the second fraction. That one's already set. But this guy over here needs to be multiplied to both top and bottom by. 2. So let's multiply 2 into both of these. And this becomes, let's scoot back here, negative 2x over 2 times 5 plus x plus 1 over 2 times x plus 5, plus 5 plus x, same thing. Well, now we're in business. We can go ahead and combine them now. We've got a common denominator. So we end up with negative 2x plus 1 over 2 times 5 plus x. Now, if there's any factoring that we could do, we would do it to make sure that there's no canceling. But there's no factoring here. That's factored. We're done. End of the story. Now, again, I usually try and choose problems that are both exciting and uh, problems that I know have something in them that are of particular interest. 
you can see why it's exciting, but why do you suppose this problem lends itself to a common mistake? The negative sign. Beware of any subtraction problems. We'll work with it in a minute, but always beware of negative signs. Let's factor that up. <coughs> Top is x plus 3. The bottom is x plus 2. x minus 4. That looks good. Minus 2x minus 5 over x minus 4. Looks good. OK, there's no canceling anywhere. Can't do it. So then we got to ask ourselves, all right, we need an LCD. So what is our LCD? Yep, x plus 2, x minus 4. That's good. Well, this one's already set to go. But that second fraction, we need to uh, tweak just a little bit to get our common denominator. We're going to have to multiply both top and bottom by, by x plus 2. I'm going to make a note here. This is a good place to throw in a set of parentheses. Why would you want to make sure that you put in parentheses here? If you don't put them in, look at what you get. Is that the same as it is if we put parentheses around it? No. This looks like it's negative 5 times that quantity, but it's actually the entire numerator times that quantity. So. Parentheses are free. Use plenty of them. Now we've got a common denominator. We can now rewrite this as first term is x plus 3. Is there any need for parentheses around that x plus 3? Not really. It's not being multiplied by anything. It's standalone. But what we do need to do is this. We need to take a negative sign and make sure that it gets distributed right here. Minus. 2x minus 5 times x plus 2, all over x plus 2, x minus 4. Well, yeah, we're kind of at a crossroads here. Are we done, or aren't we? Can we cancel or can't we? Will it snow or won't it? I don't think so. You're not done. Why really can't you quit here? What what possibility? We need to go ahead and we're going to have a lot of like terms here. Okay, If we foil this out, we're going to have some x terms that we can probably combine with that x. We're going to have a negative 10 constant, which will become positive 10 and then a 3 to combine it with. We might be combining all these like terms, mix that x plus 3 in, and then refactor it, and we might get canceling, or we might not, but we don't know until we try. So let's go ahead and do that. This is equal to, I'm going to get rid of this just to save some space. Let's go back down here now. This becomes x plus 3 minus, let's uh, multiply this out. 2x squared plus 4x. Minus 5x minus 10. All over, still, x plus 2x minus 4. Well, we can distribute that negative sign, and uh, then we'll be able to combine our like terms. Let's stop there for a minute, make sure everybody agrees with everything. We're on the same page here. 
a chance to get caught up. Okay, well, let's combine our like terms here. This becomes negative uh, 2x squared. X terms, we've got x minus 4x plus 5x. How many x terms does that leave us with? Two of them. And plus 3 plus 10. Now are we done? It's a good question. There's two unresolved issues. Should we foil out the bottom? There's no need to. It's not wrong if you do. It's just that if you leave it factored, we can always watch for canceling. Once you foil it in, it's hard to see what the factors are anymore. So I recommend strongly leaving it unfactored. You don't have to. And your book, again, is inconsistent. Some of your homework problems today, it'll leave it unfactored. Some of them, it foils out. But should we factor that, if possible? If possible, we should, because it might have an x minus 4 or x plus 2 factor that would cancel. So we got to check. Will that thing factor? Well, you remember how you check? How would you try and factor this? It doesn't necessarily mean it won't factor, though. What our test is to see if it factors is take 13 times negative 2. That gives us negative 26. The question is, can we break negative 26 into two factors that will add up to a positive 2? That's from our factoring method uh, of about two days ago. And is there any two factors of negative 26 that will add up to a positive 2? There's not. That won't factor. That top numerator is prime. Well, the top is always the numerator. That's prime. We're done. The top can't be factored anymore, so there's no more canceling. We're done. Could you foil out that uh, bottom? You could. It would still be right. It's just not necessary. Well, before we leave that problem, this next problem is very closely related. We just want to know, what are the restrictions on x? So let's go back here. You've got to go all the way back to the beginning, right after you factored it to get your restrictions. So what were our restrictions here? Negative 2 and 4. We note that uh, x cannot equal negative 2. x cannot equal 4. We plug in negative 2, we'd get a 0 here. 0 times anything, we'd have a big old 0 in that denominator. Same thing is true with 4. 4 minus 4 would be 0. No good. Now over here, we put that in later. But what was your only restriction from this fraction? 4, and we already made a note of it. So those right there are our restrictions. Note that they survived all the way to the end. Sometimes you'll have a restriction, but it'll cancel off. These both uh, survive to the the end. Let's look at one more example. Here, before we do anything, as we did before, we need to completely factor each numerator and each denominator so that we can identify the lowest common denominator, the LCD. So let's do that. First of all, 1 over x minus 3 will not factor. The next term, we know that the numerator of 1 minus x will not factor. And the denominator, though it looks like it could factor, uh, with a little bit of trial and error, you'll find that it will not. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 9. The last term here. Uh, the numerator, again, looks like it should factor, but uh, you'll see that it won't if you try for a little bit. And uh, we have to leave it as x squared plus x minus 3. 
Now the denominator here will factor. That's a difference of cubes. And so it will factor in 2, x minus 3, times x squared plus 3x plus 9. If that doesn't look familiar, you may need to review uh, sum and difference of cubes, the special case of factoring. Now we need to determine what our lowest common denominator, LCD, is. Our LCD here is going to have to have a factor of x minus 3. Uh, it appears in two of the denominators. And it has to have a factor of x squared plus 3x plus 9. It also occurs in two of the denominators. OK. Now we can go ahead and rewrite each one of those terms using the common denominator. So our first term, we can re rewrite We'll need to multiply both top and bottom of this first term by x squared plus 3x plus 9. That one's done. Now our second term. We're going to throw some parentheses here to make sure that those terms stay together. We're going to have to multiply every term of our, or excuse me, the numerator and denominator of our second term, both by the factor of x minus 3 to arrive at the LCD. And finally, our third term will remain unchanged because we already have the LCD. Now, we have each of these uh, terms having the common denominator, and we can go ahead and combine them. This first term will become 1 times x squared plus 3x plus 9, or in other words, simply x squared plus 3x plus 9. That's over our LCD of x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. Then we'll need to subtract off the second term. We can FOIL uh, together these two terms in the numerator of our second term. And if we do that, our first terms result in a product of, uh, let's see here, 1 times x is x. Our outer terms, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Our inner terms, negative x times x is minus x squared. And our last terms here, negative x times negative 3, gives us plus 3x. That again is over the common denominator of x squared plus 3x plus 9 times x minus 3. As noted a minute ago, the third term will not change. OK. Well, the last thing we need to do is combine those numerators. We can now put uh, each one of these uh, numerators over the common denominator. And so we have x squared plus 3x plus 9. Now we'll need to distribute this negative sign. Be careful, that's a common error to miss that. So we'll have minus x 
plus 3 plus x squared minus 3x. And now we can move on to the last term, which will be plus x squared plus x minus 3. This is all over our common denominator of x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. And finally, we can combine like terms. First of all, let's count up our x squared terms. We have 1, 2, 3x squared terms. So we have 3x squared. Count up our x terms. We have 3x minus x is 2x minus 3 more x. We have a total of, uh, excuse me, there's one more x term here. So we have 3x minus x minus 3x plus x. That leaves us with 0 x terms. And now we count up our constant terms. We have 9 plus 3, that's 12, minus 3. That leaves us with a constant of plus 9. So this entire numerator, when we combine all of our like terms, becomes 3x squared plus 9. Now that's over our common denominator of. x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. Now it's worth noting that we could factor this numerator slightly. And we can factor out a common factor of 3. And so we're left with 3 times x squared plus 3 over x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9.